Joining me right now is Road <laughs> FC Open Way Champ, Mighty Mo. What's going on, Mighty Mo? What's up, John? Oh, man, just that got done training, man. And, um, uh, you go home and get some rest, man, if I can. <laughs> How long has this camp been for your next fight? <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I mean, I, I don't even know what a camp is, man. I train hard all year round nowadays. I don't even take breaks, bro. <laughs> uh, even at your age? Even at my age, man. People getting, people are surprised. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? That's why I'm Mighty Mo. You know what I mean? <laughs> you must find the fountain of youth somewhere, right? And you know, I, I guess I don't know, man. I'm, uh, I, God has blessed me with the, the the genes, man, to keep doing what I'm doing in the real world. Now, the last time I talked to you, you said that you were a free agent, and I wondered, you know. How did you like? What is your contract situation right now with Road FC? Oh, this is the last fight. They say they want to negotiate, but they haven't given me no offer yet. So um, <clears throat> maybe we're gonna wait till after this fight and see what happens. I'm not sure, but um, uh, I'm uh just keep my my door open to whatever is good. Right now, you know, there's a shortage of good heavyweights out there, so I'm pretty sure, man. I'll call out any heavyweight who want it. I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I, I've never backed down off a fight and I never will. Well, in your next fight, Road FC 46, the main event, you're going to rematch Myung, uh, Hyun Myung Myung, right? Now, were you surprised that you got this matchup? Uh, no, not really, man. I, 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 I sort of felt them going that way with it. Not at all. I'm, I'm, nowadays, I'm not surprised. You know, I face, I face the best at my worst. And now I'm at my best now. It's whatever, man. I, 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 I mean, I mean, my, my training and uh, my preparation nowadays have uh, matured a lot, even at a later age. And um, <clears throat> and, I, and I, it's a blessing that I can still do what I do at a very high level. What exactly makes you believe in yourself so much at this age? Because most guys your age, 47 years old. They're, you know, chilling. They're at home, relaxing, you know, kind of, you know, taking it easy. Well, well one thing is for sure is um, they don't, they don't, they don't feel the, the, <clears throat> uh, the strength and the, and the confidence that I feel, you know. And, you know, my name is Mighty Mo for a reason. I'm very strong. I'm very powerful when I'm at, when I'm, when I'm training properly. When I'm out there doing other things that I'm not supposed to be doing, you know, that's when everything falls apart. That's anybody, but I mean, I, I've been blessed with the genes, man, to, to really, to really give it to whoever. Um, I mean, at my highest level right now, I'm, I'm I, I, these days now, I, I stay, I stay focused on my health and my eating. I try to eat right, and you know. But well, mainly just staying away from all the bad stuff that, that that's hurting my conditioning and my strength. So, I mean, people at 47 can't do it anymore because they don't have the confidence and they lack the strength. Mm -hmm. I, I lack either one now. I even lack the youth. I, I feel youthful nowadays. It's not even, it's, I mean, my actions speak louder than words. I mean, when you see how I compete. You see my, my, you see my power, my conditioning. It's, it's, it's just, man, you know, it's, it's a whole nother level, you know, and I thank God. Your opponent, Myung, do you think he deserves this shot? Has he done enough, in your opinion? Um, looking at the roster, I don't see anybody else that can maybe uh, face me at this level. I don't. Looking at the roster, um, um, unless they bring in somebody new, and you know, I mean, you guys know, you know how the Road of FC uh, organization is. Um, they're not really trying to pull anybody else out into to the, to the organization. <clears throat> but um, in, in the organization's roster, he's probably the only one that's capable of seeing me right now. So, um, what, yeah. what do you see different about him since you guys last met? I, I haven't seen his ground game. He hasn't shown no ground game. But as far as the stand-up, um, um, I don't see nothing different. 
I don't see nothing different. Um, you know, he, he, he does the same old thing when he was going into the fight with me. He was knocking everybody out, but you know how that goes. Um, he didn't do shit with me. But um, uh, I'm a way better fighter than when I fought him that time. So ground or standing up, I don't even – doesn't matter. Do you expect him to engage with you this time? Because the last time, you know, he spent a lot of time kind of, you know, sticking and moving and a lot more moving. Yeah, because he felt my power. But he's going to be really surprised when he feels my power now and my speed. I got a lot, I got a lot of something for him. He just better not freeze because as soon as he freezes, he's, he's done. Do you think you have more power now than you did before? Most definitely. Most definitely. I, I, I know I've been in this game a long time, and I, I thank God I, I ain't punch drunk. But, uh, you know, um, I understand uh, what real power feels like, and, and you guys have seen me, my power then. So for me to ever speak like this, I don't usually speak like this about how my power has increased. And, and um, yeah. My, my my power and technique has has sharpened up a hundred times. So, who have you been working with this camp to you know increase the power, increase the technique? Uh, basically, my myself, man. That's because uh, every every trainer. I mean, there ain't too many trainers out there who can teach power. You know what I'm saying? There's, there, there's not a whole lot. I mean, there, there's some, but uh, I mean. At my level, there's, there's not a whole lot in my area. There's not a whole lot of uh, guys in my area that can teach it, man. So, so me, I just had to critique it and critique it and keep, keep, keep. Um, it's like being in the science lab, you know what I mean? You just keep hitting the drawing board and keep hitting the drawing board, and then you find it, and then boom, this is it. I'm, I master it and I keep pushing forward with it, mainly because I'm <clears throat> in the best shape of my life now. I understand it more because you know I a lot of. You know that story, but you know I've critiqued it myself, and I understand the game so much and the power. I've been an athlete my whole entire life, and it's 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 uh it's, it's basically um me myself just putting it together. Is it hard for you to find sparring partners because you know you are known to be able to put people to sleep? Oh man, every time. Uh, it's hard as heck. I got to go in there with size 20 gloves, man, just to spar these guys. And um, and, uh, and, that, and that I don't even go hard because I'm always losing sparring partners. <laughs> so there's no uh, MMA sparring then, really? Not, I don't know. If I do, man, I got to really uh, I watch my power. So I try to work on speed and not getting hit because once I get hit, oh, I, I tell, I, you, know, you know how that goes. It's like an automatic uh, switch to turn up the power level. <laughs> Okay. But but I try, I try to stay focused on not getting hit and just being more agile and, 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 and connecting and connecting, putting combinations together. You're based out of California, but you've been fighting in Asia for a while, especially for Road FC in your recent career. What are some, you know, obstacles that you face when you have to fly, you know, 12 hours, 14 hours to go fight? Um, because I got, I got friends uh, all over the world, you know, people I deal with and trainers and fighters, you know, I, mainly for Korea, man, I, I got, I got friends and, uh, and other guys from K1 people, from K1, K1 days and trainers and they have gyms in Japan. So like I did last time, no, not the fight before last fight, I often go out to, the, to Japan, Tokyo and train out there with, uh, with my man Fai. Mm -hmm. Fale Moy, uh, Ray Shuffle's cousin, uh, from Ichigiki, um, uh fight gym. And uh, so they helped prep me over there for the 10 days before I head up to the fight. Yeah, are you going to be doing the same thing this time around? Yes, sir. I'll be over there with uh, Fale, Fale Moy at Ichigiki, um, uh fight gym over there in um, Tokyo, Japan, in Shibuya. What is your prediction for this, uh, your next title defense uh, with Hyun Man Myung? Myung better not freeze. Because <laughs> as soon as he blinks, uh, 
left or right hand is going to finish the job. Then when, when this fight's over, what do you see happening with your career? Do you see yourself most likely re-signing with Road, or do you see something else, some other opportunities being open to you? Whatever's good, man. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I'm here to fight. I'm here to show the world that I, that, that I truly am the best heavyweight at my age. And um, I'm going to live up to my name, Mighty Mo. You know, that's what I came in, and I'm going to leave as Mighty Mo. And... Um, I want to leave on top, so so before I retire, you know, I, I want to just be, I just want to reign all over everybody and leave a stamp on my, my legacy. Will you be the first 50-year-old champ? If if God blesses me with it, which I, I don't see, I don't see no slowing down at this moment, because my explosiveness and my power and my finesse is, it's, um, I mean, you guys see it. You guys see what it is. My last fights, um, I'm at my best shape, and um, and um, you know, AJ, nothing but a number. I mean, you see the great heavyweights out there in boxing, George Foreman and um, um, and um, Muhammad. I mean, what do you call that? Um, um Holyfield and um. Uh, Bernard Hopkins, you know, they all they all champions at a later age, you know. I'm like the George Foreman M MMA. <laughs> <laughs> now, before I let you go, I wanted to ask you about your uh, your sons. And I heard, I see that you've been taking your sons to the gym, you know. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit? Oh, yeah, man. My, my boys, man, uh, my younger ones, my older ones, I think, you know, they, they grow up and they, um, they, they, they want to – tend to find their own road and make their own decisions and make their own mistakes. And I'm like, okay, don't say, don't, don't act like I didn't warn you, but my younger ones, man, I mean, I, they're, they're more aggressive towards me taking them to the gym and they, and they bug the crap out of me uh, about taking them to the gym and watching them spar. And so the one John, uh, no, no, um, Mike, the one I introduced you, Mike Bruce, mm -hmm. He's always bugging about sparring, and he's been sparring some kids. I throw him in with some kids, and he, these kids have been boxing for, like, four or five years, and he's only started, like, five, six months ago in boxing, and he's over here just putting a whooping on all of them. And I'm like, wow. And the crazy thing about it, he knows how to adjust his, um, his angles of his punches and move away from the punch when it hits him naturally. And I'm like, wow, this kid is something else. I mean, he does it now. I wouldn't. I really don't like pushing them towards it. But if they, when they bug, because they know what I do, and they bug me all day. I want to go. When you gonna take me to go spar? When you gonna I'm like? Right, I'll take you, man. I'll take you tomorrow. And they'll bug me. Like, oh, you say you gonna take me to today? Oh, all right, all right. Come on, let's go. So I take them and they go in there and they just start super energized, man. I can't believe it. I think they get it from their daddy. That's what everybody says. <laughs> my dad seen my seen my kids for the first time. He was like, wow. Your kids are just like you, nonstop. They don't never stop. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any of your other sons working with you too? No, my my other sons, man. They they sort of um, they uh, you know, they, they want to live with their mother. You know, they 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 get caught up in uh, in trials and tribulations, man, and and issues because you know their mother tells them one thing and then they want to listen to their mother when it's good and then they, they want to get fed up with that they want to come and live with me and so they get fed up with that and I'm like hey well, don't come live with me because you're scared of what the responsibilities over there you better handle your stuff over there don't come because you're going to catch it twice as hard over here so, <laughs> well it's basically man they need to stop making excuses and grow you know how kids are when they're growing up and they always they find the easy route out of, out of everything but nah not with me I mean, they know it, you know. But my oldest son, he placed eighth in uh, no, my my second oldest, he he, he placed eighth in uh, amateur boxing, uh, the international one out of here. He could have went farther, but you know, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of trials and tribulations. My oldest has just got through playing football for a, a, a university out of Texas. So now he just made me a grandfather. So now I'm a physical grandfather. That, uh, no, two months ago in December, he made me a grandfather. <laughs> so you're man you're a proud grandfather i think you're the only grandfather out there in mma that's fighting hey, at the championship level legendary man come on man hey when i first came in i came in as a champion i'm gonna leave as a champion <laughs>
What's going on, Mo? Oh man, just a little disappointed, man. Um, uh, my opponent got injured or couldn't fight. Yeah. Yeah, that's a unfortunate situation. Now you just heard the news. What do you do moving forward? Um, man, I was hoping I can get a, a replacement opponent or something, but uh, they don't got nobody for me. Now, what what kind of effects does this have on your life? Because you haven't fought in a while. You know, you are a family man. You know, if you don't fight, you don't make money. So. Yeah, that's that's the disappointing part about it, really. You know, um, um, wrote SC, they understand uh, what I do, and that's why I'm at my best. You know, what I mean, I've, uh, uh, man, it's, you know, it, it um, it makes me think about all, all, all just management and um. You know all the all the bad shit that's happened to me in the in this fight business, you know, and it's disappointing. I mean, I mean, I understand business is business, but I'm I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a losing fighter. I'm a I'm a I'm, I'm a champion. And I don't understand why they, they just keep dragging me out like this. You know, uh, it's disappointing. I mean, uh, now. You said before that, you know, you were in not contract negotiations. This was your last fight on your contract. Uh, is there a time limit? Yeah, yeah um, the time limit ended January 1st, but I have, there's, there's other organizations out there and a lot of them understand that um, I'm on the contract with Road FC and they're not trying to face no lawsuits, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And it's... Um, and they understand that I got one fight left because, you know, I, I have to explain that to them, you know. But from, what, from the feedback I'm getting back is that they're, they're saying that they, they don't want to get sued or, or whatever the case may be, you know. Of course, they don't want to be sued. You know, nobody wants to be sued by anybody, right? Yeah, of course. And, you know, that's, that's the big monkey wrench in this whole, in this whole um, ordeal, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I got to try to figure something out. This, this is this this is tough, but you know, I'm just asking. I'm asking World FC if I uh, see if they can compensate and give me some type of love, man. You know what I mean? I've, I've uh, spent a lot of money, time, training, and preparation getting ready for this fight. I mean, you guys. I mean, all, you know, you, you understand the, the process that goes behind this, and hopefully, um, they can um, they can honor me on some on, on my request. How much how much time have you spent, you know? Could you explain, like, how much, you know, I don't know if you want to talk about the money aspect of it, but there must have been a lot of sacrifice. Like, can you break down some of the sacrifice that you have made for this camp? Oh, yeah, well, you know, um, just um, just traveling, a lot of traveling, you know, finding good sparring partners. And, I mean, as you know, man, it's like I've told you before, man, it's hard for me to get sparring partners. So I got to do a lot of traveling. Yeah, so um, and just dealing with my, you know, you know, things I've got to deal with, you know, especially with my family. But, you know, traveling and getting um, sparring partners and, and um, you know, the usual, you know. Do you, do you want to move forward with road? Is that your plan? Um, um, to be honest, um, I mean, financially, man, that's all I'm looking for, to be financially stable. Mm -hmm. uh, at this point, they're not really showing me, I mean, uh, how, how can I honor this type of uh, treatment, you know? It's, it's not good at all for me, you know? What, you said that there's other promotions that are interested. Could you talk about that, or is it lawsuits? Like you cannot even mention that at all. Um, uh, I don't. I really don't want to put them on blast or anything mm -hmm. like that. I rather just, you know, what I'm saying. Um, I mean, we all know what organizations out there that are big, and they can be able to take care of me as me being a champion. And 
And I mean, it is what it is, you know, I'm knocking everybody out nowadays, you know, at this point, and I'm 100%. I mean, you know, everybody knows the fight game is um, who's the baddest dude in the ring. I mean, you can talk about age, look, or whatever, how you look, you know what I mean? But when it comes down to it, inside that ring is what you do. And uh, I've demolished everybody in my way uh, heading up to this um, this heavyweight title. So, Going forward, what is your ideal situation? What do you want? Uh, with, with Road FC, man, financially stable, the money I deserve, you know? And I... And and if I got a show and tell with another opponent, any opponent out there, I'm ready for any opponent out there right now. And I've been in this game a long time, and this is the best time, I, best way I've ever felt throughout my whole career. I mean, you know, I mean, it is what it is, you know. Um, and if um, and I'm looking for financial stability for for me and my family. Bottom line. Fight game is tough, and I'm tough, and, and I've showed it. I just want financial stability for me, for me and my family. Did they, have they told you like when they are they plan on having this fight? Um, they said May. They're thinking about May or something like that. Um, uh, they need to do something. You know, this is my last fight on the contract. I I, I sort of want to just you know. It, will we negotiate or move forward or or just finish the fight up so that way I can say I can go to other organizations and say I'm done with them. Hmm. Let's do something. I want your best guys, whoever. Whether it be UFC, Risen, anybody out there. M1 or whatever the top or Bellator. Um, I'm at my best now. So it doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter to me. And I'm, um, yeah, you know, I've been fighting a long time, and I know how good I am right now. <laughs> you heard it from the man. He'll go to Ryzen, UFC, M1. It doesn't matter. All over the globe. He wants to fight the best. Thank you for your time, Mo. I appreciate it, John. Thank you.